Korean branch ECHO has provided between 2018 and 2020 alone 5 million euros. And this doesn't count the contributions of many of the to the extent possible, encouraging the de facto of Thank you very much for the great hospitality extended to us today by the authorities, the municipalities, the partners we are working with, people from the private sector, from the NGO world, from the academia, human rights activists. And I'm very grateful also for your presence. It's impressive to see so many journalists here. We came here today for two main reasons. First, to demonstrate our solidarity with the people of Gaza, who have been deeply affected not only by the closure for more than 30 years, but also by the fact that COVID has taken a heavy, heavy toll on the population of Gaza. The other reason is to get a better first-hand understanding of the problems the population in Gaza is facing and to see and to better understand how best we from the European Union can help the population in improving their livelihood, in addressing the pandemic and overcoming the hurdles they face. It is our deep conviction that we need to demonstrate to you full solidarity with the Palestinian cause. Gaza is for us an integral part of the Palestinian occupied territories and there will not be found a solution for an independent, a viable, a contiguous and a democratic Palestinian state without the full inclusion of Gaza. We are deeply also convinced that the human rights of the people of Palestine, their right to self-determination, their right to education, their right to health, to food, to free access and exit needs to be respected. Let's be frank about this. We have three major duty bearers who all impact on the life of Gazans. First of all, it is the Israeli occupation which maintains full control over the borders of Gaza, over the maritime uh, area of Gaza and the airspace of Gaza. Second, we have the Palestinian Authority, which is the only internationally recognized government of the entire occupied Palestinian territories. Also, the Authority has a clear responsibility towards the people of Gaza. And third, and last but not least, the de facto authorities who happen to rule this ship since 2007. Also, they are bound by international law, international human rights law, and have to respect the principles of good governance, democracy, and human rights. These three duty bearers have to fulfill their obligations to the Gazan people. Gaza counts about 1.5 million people in need, or put differently, 75% of the Gazan population is in dire need of support. 1.4 million are considered to be refugees. I say this because I want to underline the fundamental and the indispensable role UNRWA plays 
in trying to help Gazan children to have access to education, in trying to get families access to clean water, and in trying to provide health services. It is absolutely important that the international community continues to support UNRWA. I'm proud to say that the European Union became in 2019 and 20 the most important provider of funds to UNRWA. And we will continue to honor our, our, our commitments to support the Palestinian refugees, not only in Gaza, but elsewhere in the region. And we call upon other donors, and notably from the Arab countries, and also very soon, hopefully, from the United States, to live up to their moral obligations and commitments towards the cause of Palestinian refugees. Today, we visited first the European hospital in Rafah. This hospital has been built with EU funds since the late 80s, and today is the most important referral center for COVID patients. We were given a very sober assessment of the needs this hospital and the entire Gaza Strip needs uh, requires in order to be able to continue providing the much needed services for COVID patients. We work in close cooperation with the World Health Organization, many NGOs who do a tremendous job, and we continue supporting uh, the hospital and the health authorities in providing the services. We also hope that we can very soon help the authorities in having access to the much needed vaccine. You know this is a very complicated issue, uh, but the moment these vaccines become available, we will try our utmost in close cooperation with the United Nations to facilitate this vaccine to those most in need, the elderly, those frontline health workers, and others who need to have it. We then visited the Gaza desalination plant. This is to become the most important European Union investment project in the Gaza Strip. We started eight years ago with uh, the help of the Austrians and others in order to set up a small desalination plant. And this caters today for 75,000 people in the area of the plant uh, in, in, in Gaza City. We are currently working on an extension and hopefully by June or July next year, we are going to have a capacity to address the excess of clean water needs of about 250,000 people. But we do more than that. Next week, I will sign with Prime Minister Steyer a contribution agreement with the European Investment Bank, which will be the first commitment of the EU to start implementing the project of a Gaza Central Desalination Plant. Once this project is completed and the EU will put up an amount of 150 million euros, the entire drinking water needs of the two million population of Gaza will be satisfied. And we do more. We are currently working with international partners on the possibility of doing a large-scale Gas for Gaza project. We are in the phase of trying to identify the necessary financing mechanisms, but in connection with the Gaza desalination plant and the Gas for Gaza energy program, the two important sectors where you need support now in the medium term and the long run, water and energy, will be addressed with European Union support and other support from the Arab world and other partners as well. Afterwards, we had a meeting with a number of distinguished human rights activists, NGO practitioners, and business people. And we promised to stay more in tune, in closer contact with these very important representatives of the civil society. Without a vibrant civil society, you don't have democracy. Without a vibrant civil society, you don't have a tolerant society. And without a vibrant private sector, you have no jobs, no livelihood, no employment. So for us, these two partners, civil society, human rights defenders, and business sector are intrinsic and independent partners in development. We were able, thanks to a recent decision of the German and the French government, to award a very prestigious human rights prize to uh, 
a very um, important member of our community. It's Yamis Assam Yumis, who uh, was rewarded by both governments for his contribution to uh, defending human rights and rule of law in Gaza and beyond. Uh, we were proud to be able to present this to him. Uh, in a week, uh, two days' time, on the day of the um, International Human Rights Day, this um, will be officially announced by the two ministers of France and Germany. So, to conclude, it was a great day for us. It was a great uh, day of, again, connecting with the population in Gaza, with the authorities, with the civil society, with the private sector. And I promise you that we will come back as soon as possible and that we stay in contact as close as possible with all partners on the ground. Thank you very much.